in this problem we are given this diagram right here we are told that there is no charge at the upper terminal of the ideal element in the figure for t less than zero so we're only going to be focusing as long as t is greater than or equal to zero before part a we are told that at t is equal to zero a current of 125e raised to the negative 2500 t milliamps enters the upper terminal and will accumulate at the upper terminal so it's basically going to be in this terminal right here we have at t is equal to zero a current of 125 we're going to highlight all of this because that is super important after we read this sentence we can move on to a which is be able to derive the expression for the change that accumulates at the upper terminal for t is greater than or equal to zero well it gives us this equation right here and this is it solved so it really did the entire work for us the problem's done really all we have to do is plug in things but it's important to know how to derive this expression well to derive this expression we are going to look at what we're given right here at t is equal to zero and then we have to note be able to derive the expression for the charge that accumulates at the terminal for t is greater than or equal to zero so this is important too to derive this expression we need to integrate what we have we need to integrate our t and this is going to go from t is equal to zero and then it says the accumulates of the upper level for t greater than or equal to zero we don't know what this is this is some t so this is going to be t is equal to t because it's just it's some t now we will plug in our solution we are going to do 125 times e to the negative 2500 t d t because we are going to be deriving t and we're going to set this equal to a t and this is how we would write this. From here, we're gonna go on to the next step, and our left side is going to change to be our QT, and from here, we are going to derive this entire right side. So we're gonna look at all of this. We can move the 125 out in front because it is a constant, so we're gonna have a 125 here, we're gonna have a zero here, and a T here, and then inside of this, we're gonna have an E negative two, five zero zero t d t and then we just need to derive this so to derive this we are going to bring our negative 2500 down so what this would look like with our 125 out front and then our negative 2500 down we're going to have a negative two five zero zero and then the e to our negative two five zero zero t inside of here this is just basic differential equations. To check this, if we were to derive this, we would get our antiderivative when we factor this part in as well to be this right here. So from here, all we need to do is add our boundaries, which is t and zero like this. And then we're gonna plug it into this t right here. So moving on to the next step, we're going to have q t is equal to well, we're gonna have this 125, but this is in milliamps. So I actually forgot to put the units here, but it's super important that we do. So we are going to put the units, we can put it in here, and then I'll put the units in here like this. And this is important because we have milliamps. We were given this in milliamps. We can't calculate in milliamps. We can only do it in amps. And we know that one amp is equal to 10 times negative three milliamps. We know one milliamp is equal to 10 to the negative cubed amps. So if we were to take our 125, and I'll just do this in red right here, we have 125 milliamps, and we are going to convert this to be amps. We need an amps up top, and we need a milliamps on the bottom. Well, we what we know is that we have one milliamp, and that is going to be 10 to the negative cubed amps. We'll get rid of our milliamps like this. So we're just gonna be left with a 125 times 10 to the negative three amps, or we can rewrite this as 0.125. So on top of here, we'll have a 0.125 over our negative 2,500. And then inside of our integrated portion, we are going to substitute our T for a T. 
So we're going to have an e negative 2500t, and then we're going to substitute our t for a 0. Well, e to the power of 0, or anything to the power of 0, is just 1, so we're going to have a negative 1. And this negative just comes from um, it being this part, part 1, minus part 2. That's where the negative comes from. It's the upper limit plugged in minus the lower limit. Also differential equation basics. And now this is going to be in amps. Since we plugged in our T, we know that this T up here, I will draw an arrow in red, this represents time. So time is being represented in seconds. So we have to add on to our units in S. So we have AS. And this is actually equal to a Kloom. So we can write this in a, another step being Q t is equal to and then we could plug our 0 0.125 divided by negative 2500 into a calculator and then we get negative 5 times 10 to the negative 5 and then inside of here we have our e negative 2500t minus 1 and then since we said a of s is equivalent to a column we're going to have this here well we know from our problem it's in micro columns we can then convert this. So we're gonna have this over one, and this is being multiplied by our conversion. We're gonna have our columns down here to cancel out with our columns, and we're gonna have our micro columns up here. We know that one micro column is equal to 10 to the negative six. We can write this down here and rewrite this as QT is equal to if we were to plug this into a calculator, it'd be a little bit simpler, we would just get the answer, but if we wanted to look at this, what we would do is we would get this negative 5 and this negative 6, and get the difference of it, and the difference of it is going to be negative 1. Well, we're going to flip this up top, so this is basically going to be times 10, so we have a negative 5 times 10, so our QT is going to be negative 50. And then we have our E to the negative 2500, t minus 1. That's in brackets. If we compare this to what we have, the only difference is the negative, and that's because they moved the negative inside of our brackets. And we can see that if we look at both of them comparingly right here. So I'm just going to circle this. And that is how we get part A, which they already did for us. For part B, we are told to find the total charge that accumulates at the upper terminal, i.e. let t be equal to infinity. Well, to do this whole process again, what we would do is up here, instead of plugging in t for t, we would plug in infinity. So now t is equal to infinity. So what we can do is replace our t with infinity because we did our work, we did all of this work, it's kind of like building a computer, you did all of the stuff so you know exactly where everything is. So when we go in here, when we replace this t up here, we could just put in an infinity. So we can keep following it, go down these steps, and we know that it's okay to plug in infinity right here for our t. We have t approaching infinity is equal to 50 and then inside of here we have our 1 minus e to the negative 2500 times infinity we bracket this off for this part right here we know that if we have a negative right here i'll write it in red if we have a negative in our exponent it translates to it being moved to the denominator so really we have 1 over e to the 2500 times infinity this can be translated to 1 over infinity. And if we have 1 over infinity, we basically have 0. So what this is saying that we have is 50, and then in parentheses, 1 minus 0, or 50 times 1, which will give us 50. That means, for this answer, we are going to have 50. For part C, we are told that if the current is abruptly stopped at t is equal to 0 0.5 milliseconds, how much charge has accumulated at the upper terminal? And we are told that Q, t is approaching 0.5 so basically we're just plugging in 0.5 for t we're going to do the same thing where we have our 50 our 1 minus e to the negative 2500 and then in here we have our t which is being plugged in but we have to note that we have milliseconds right here so we need to convert this to seconds i'll do the conversion in green we have 0.5 milliseconds so we know we have to convert this to seconds so we're going to have seconds on top and milliseconds on bottom we know that we have one millisecond is equal to 10 to the negative cubed seconds from our chart. And so if we plug this in, we are going to write this as 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative cubed seconds. Now we can plug all of this in our calculator as 50 
and then a parenthesis one minus e to the negative 2,500. We have to use the caret for that. And then a parenthesis 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative cubed, parenthesis, parenthesis, and then press enter. If we do all of this correctly, we are going to see that this yields us a 35.675. And this is in micro clums as well. So is this other one up here. This is also 50 micro clums. But we're just going to plug this answer up here. So writing in here, we have 35.675. And this is the correct answer. We have 50 and 35.675. And we also know how to actually solve or derive the expression from the work we did on the right side.